Apple and Google are working on releasing apps that can track contacts among people that can then be used to flag if you've been near COVID-19 infected persons. I'll explain to you how they intend to design these apps and we'll examine if this can be made safe for privacy. Now, watch also what happens to this video to see if YouTube stifles debate. Check back every so often. Will YouTube censor this kind of video? I'll note in the description if this is demonetized or hidden in some way. Now, in case you think you know my answer, you will not hear it till the very end. The answer isn't obvious, so stay tuned. China started the concept of doing COVID-19 tracking apps. What China did first was to record every single person infected with COVID-19, then track that phone location and the health status of the person. Then everyone can check if they're near an infected person. And of course, in China, everyone is openly tracked with location on their phones. So even if you didn't download this app, which probably required to do by their government, the location information can be used to identify you, get your device login info, and then have someone knock on your door to tell you that you may be infected. Now, many people are short-sighted and perhaps are unable to analyze the effects of this technology beyond the crisis. This reminds me of the Patriot Act. We get a terrorist attack and the solution then is to treat every citizen as a terrorist through mass surveillance and that's supposed to make us safer. Freedom in the Fourth Amendment in the U.S. becomes irrelevant. So we'll analyze the approaches being planned by Google and Apple to see if this is another red herring when it comes to privacy or if this is actually a good thing. In countries run by dictators or a communist regime, Obviously, they can just force you to be tracked and you don't have a choice. In free countries like the U.S., they want you to agree to the tracking by making it sound safe so you use this kind of app willingly, just like many of you agree to the extreme tracking done by Facebook, Google, and Apple. So in one case, they force you to be tracked, like in China and Singapore, and in another case, they trick you into thinking that tracking is safe. This is the way the new COVID tracking apps are supposed to work. Apple and Google engineers are hard at work designing this right now. The tracking is supposed to not be based on location. The tracking will be based on Bluetooth. Bluetooth is built into all your phones and just like your Wi-Fi, your phones emit a signature everywhere you go. And that signature is the MAC address, media access control. It is like a serial number. So whether you like it or not, your phone Wi-Fi today emits an identifier everywhere you go. Now, what's interesting is that they're planning on using the Bluetooth identifier instead of Wi-Fi. I think the reason for this is that Bluetooth requires a closer range, like under 10 feet, while the Wi-Fi identifier can be 40 feet away. Now, COVID app aside, did you know that your phone emits this signal? It's called a Wi-Fi probe and it's sent every second on Android and a changing amount of time on iOS from one second to a minute. Bluetooth doesn't broadcast continuously like Wi-Fi, so that's why they would need an app to enable it. Now, what I'm saying should worry you. You can already be tracked multiple ways even without this planned COVID app. So keep this in the back of your head. The way this COVID-19 app would work is that Apple and Google will both have apps that people can download. And then anytime you come in contact with other phone users, the Bluetooth ID, the MAC address I presume, would then be recorded on a central database. A database shared between Apple, Google, and I'm sure the governments that would identify a list of contacts. If one of those contacts admit to being infected by COVID-19, then those who recorded being in the vicinity would then be informed through the app and then they can take precautions like a self-quarantine to prevent further spread. 
In order to safeguard privacy, the Bluetooth ID would have to be kept in a non-identifiable form. This would be easy to do using something called the hash value. So instead of using the actual MAC address, identity can be confirmed using a hash of the MAC address of all the parties, which would mathematically prove a match to the original identifier. In Germany, someone is building a similar app and they say that they will keep data only for two days since they say that's a time period where someone is infectious but have no symptoms. Then Apple, Google, this German company, the media and governments will then tell you that they are very concerned about privacy and that this would make you safer because the parties concerned will ensure your privacy is maintained. Sound good? So are you going to be the first to download this COVID-19 app when it's ready? To be more educated about this, let me add some information that many people don't realize unless you've been watching my videos in the past. Apple and Google already do something called Wi-Fi scanning. And this enables them to map everyone's location in real time. Everyone with an iOS device can see this in action with Find My Phone. This works by having your phone scan for Wi-Fi routers in the area and then scans the MAC address. Again, the unique serial number of the Wi-Fi routers matches it to crowdsource GPS coordinates and based on signal strength, computations can then determine where the Wi-Fi routers are and of course where you are. This enabled Apple and Google to show you in the news that people weren't doing social distancing in Florida with students having fun with spring break on the beach. I want to let this sink in. There was no app when they did this. They already know where everyone is. They know every place you've been to. They can already tell you who was near you within six zucking feet. But they have no easy way to tell you this without A, knowing who's infected, and B, dealing with the bad press from you realizing that your privacy is already lost. So this app will fake you out. It will supposedly be voluntary. Each individual would voluntarily admit to being infected and then supposedly, secretly, each user who was in the vicinity would be informed and you have this information then to act on your own. What's flawed with this is that the tracking by Bluetooth would now be combined with many other things in their database. First, it would verify proximity in a way that the Wi-Fi triangulation may not do as well, such as during standby mode. The Bluetooth contact tracing will now be a database combined with full location tracking of every individual. Then the COVID-19 status will now be part of their knowledge of your health record, which the government already knows, but will now be in the hands of private companies. Remember that your iOS and Google phones are identified positively by your Apple ID, Google ID, which are tied to your credit cards, home addresses, and email, among other things. You have to analyze what other data these companies possess, not just what is being pulled by these new apps. So these new apps provide new information about each and every one of you. Aside from locations, platform IDs, MAC addresses, device serial numbers, emails, phone numbers, IMEI, IMZ, addresses, real names. What else do these companies know? Well, people, they have your contact list. Certainly that is used heavily on each Android and iOS phone. This means they already have what is called a relationship map. This is used to identify levels of connections between people. So they can even tell who you've been in contact with that's outside your family circle or home circle. Facebook and Google can extend this knowledge further by knowing every website you visit using browser and device fingerprinting. Now, I want these companies to come out and state firmly that they do no location tracking without your permission. They won't say that because they do. They're no different than China. They just don't tell you. Here's the sad part. Companies like Facebook have already been tracking MAC addresses, 
particularly Wi-Fi MAC addresses of people around you for years. The Facebook app states this in their end user license agreement in case you think I'm guessing. MAC addresses are tracked, which means that with Wi-Fi probes, you're already announcing your MAC address in four networks. And this information can be captured on the air. I can make an app that can recognize people around me and show you their contact history with you just from Wi-Fi probes. Hackers know this. The problem with trying to solve this kind of problem with apps is that this is not being done by independent parties. Apple and Google already have this information and they just don't want to share what they have with you. And even if an independent app developer decides to design such an app, what would it take to corrupt this developer to open up that database for big bucks or big advertising dollars? I can tell you right now that if two people downloaded the COVID-19 app, then had contact, and one of them got infected, Apple and Google already know who's in the vicinity of that contact and can give you a phone alert even if you didn't download the COVID-19 app. The only missing information is the person voluntarily admitting to having COVID-19. Now, in case you didn't know this, when you go to the doctor and you are tested for COVID-19 in the U.S. and come out positive, I guarantee you that the government already knows your identity and your diagnosis in a centralized database with your name, address, and something called an ICD-10 code. The only reason that's not available to Apple and Google is because of U.S. HIPAA privacy laws. Anyone who works in a medical facility knows this. Check it out, ICD-10. So, you could reverse this app process, have the government report persons with COVID-19, and have Apple and Google identify all the locations that these persons were in and identify the contacts. Now, would you like that? There is no actual difference. Both the government and Apple and Google already have their own databases. They just haven't combined them. So we're getting faked out here. We begin to believe that they don't have the information. So they want us to voluntarily offer the information, though both parties already know everything if they combine their data. It would be pretty bad press though. Suddenly we would have hearings in Congress about privacy and, and fears a big brother would ensue. But we're already there. They just don't want to tell you. To be frank with you, the data available to Google, Apple, and the government in the US is the same as that available in China. I'm actually curious if in the future, if people don't voluntarily download this COVID-19 app, if the government will just share their ICD-10 diagnosis data to Apple, Google, and then force it down your throat in the name of health safety. Like I said, they can do this right now, just like getting those amber alerts on the phone. And you ought to think what this can be used for outside of COVID-19. Now let's look ahead to the future after the COVID-19 crisis. Clearly Bluetooth and Wi-Fi probe apps will be more accepted. So this portends more spying apps in the future. And by the way, Android and iOS can already record MAC address probes if they want to, even without any app. So if this is going to be the next big thing, they can just hoard this information in a, in a database like they do locations. Again, don't forget this. The covered surveillance here in the US is no different than that done in China. Same information, same capability. The bigger question is, do you accept this or should you in fact want to stop the whole data collection to begin with? Do you have the guts to do that or will you be sheep because it's too convenient? But mark my words, this already opens up the next level of surveillance and it's already too late to stop it on these phones. So, will you download this COVID-19 app? To be frank with you, if you already have an iOS or standard Google Android, then perhaps there will be little that is new that will be captured your privacy has already been lost. So download it if you want. But think, like I've been telling you in other videos, 
the only way to deny them this information is to use de Google phones and Linux phones because they have turned these phones into the ultimate spying and controlling device. I'm the internet privacy guy and if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel so you can learn about these important privacy topics. Thank you for watching.